We have two speakers today. From India, we have Dr. Tuhin Mistri, who will be talking on CAPS block. He is a junior consultant, Department of Anesthesiology and Perioperative Care uh, of Ganga Medical Center and Hospitals. His area of interest are regional and from anesthesia, regional anesthesia teaching and research. He has over 100 publications and a contributing author to different books, including Barash's Clinical Anesthesia, South Asian edition. So I'll be requesting Dr. Tuhin Mistri to start his presentation. Thank you so much for your kind introduction, sir. I would like to thank the committee members of AO. SRAP ma'am and especially Dr. Bala Vinkat sir for giving me this wonderful opportunity. Good evening the organizing committee members and the delegates. I am going to present about the CAPS block. So before I begin, let me declare that the sources of photographs used in my presentations are properly cited. The illustrations or the schematics are my drawing and the patient consent was obtained. So CAP stands for the crosswise approach to popliteal sciatic block. Crosswise means the across or transverse. So it is about technique of popliteal sciatic nerve block or popliteal fossa block in supine position. Recently, we have published these two papers, including a case series. I will request you all to go through these two papers to understand more about this CAPS block. So now, what is CAPS block? Why do we need CAPS block? Is it different from the available ultrasound-guided popliteal sciatic nerve block approaches? Will it change the current RA practice for Belloni surgeries? I firmly believe that we will be able to find the answers after this lecture. So, popliteal sciatic nerve block or popliteal fossa block is widely practiced regional anesthesia or analgesia technique for Belloni surgeries. It is either used alone or in combination with a femoral or the saphenous nerve block. If we go through the literature, the available approaches for the ultrasound guided popliteal fossa blocks are according to the patient's position. It can be prone or lateral position uh, via posterior approach in supine position via posterior lateral or medial approach according to the needling technique or the trajectory. It can be in plane, out of plane, lateral to medial, medial to lateral or posterior to anterior approaches. Furthermore, some modifications of these conventional techniques like reverse sims position or gapped supine or figure of four positions were also tried to overcome the technical difficulties faced in the conventional techniques. In prone position, we easily get an optimized image to perform the block and it is very convenient for the performer or the anesthesiologist. But at the same time, it is time consuming, requires external assistance to change the patient's position from supine to prone and again from prone to supine after performance of the block. And there is a risk of airway compromise, especially in those patients in which you are using sedation to perform the block. In lateral decubitures, it offers better access to the airway than prone position. It is also convenient for scanning, but at the same time, probe stabilization, image acquisition and uh, is also difficult sometimes. And it also requires assistance and uh, time consuming because you have to change the patient's position from supine to lateral and again to the lateral. This change in position is harmful in case of polytrauma patients, patients with spine stability, Recording in or progress. patients on mechanical ventilation, and the pregnant ladies. Hence, sciatic nerve block in supine position is an attractive alternative to provide greater patient comfort while performing the procedure. So far, we have learned that we need supine position for to perform the sciatic nerve block, which is better. Now, let's focus what are the available supine popliteal sciatic nerve block approaches described in the literature. I am sure all of us has practiced this supine lateral or supine posterior approaches and still some of us are practicing. So with supine lateral approach, the probe is placed on the posterior aspect of the popliteal fossa and the needle is inserted from lateral to medial direction. This approach requires assistance and flexion at the knee joint creates an uneven surface. The legs also because of the elevation will have a tendency to roll. 
so the transducer placement and stabilization the image acquisition and the needle manipulation will be difficult in this position especially it is difficult for the trainees if you look at the hand position it also very stressful to keep the hand like this during the performance of the block next coming to the supine posterior approach the patient position as well as probe placement will be similar to the supine lateral approach but here we are accessing the sciatic nerve out of plane technique from posterior to anterior direction here also the problems remain the same to overcome these issues gap supine position was described as you can see here but it also didn't solve the issues later in 2016 tahas described two different techniques to access the sciatic nerve in supine position that is supine medial approach uh, some problem still remains if you look carefully in all these supine approaches lifting the leg or flexion at hip or knee joint is required limb movement can result in pain in non anesthetized limb and there is might be misalignment of the non stabilized fracture segments hence we need a technique to perform the supine popliteal sciatic nerve block in neutral or anatomical limb position we proposed a possible solution to this problem that is the caps block crosswise approach to popliteal sciatic nerve block let me discuss the relevant anatomy and sono anatomy till now we know that it is in the popliteal fossa sciatic nerve enters through its apex and diverges into the tibial and the common peroneal components it can be divided from its origin that is sacral plexus and up to the popliteal crease the cadaveric studies demonstrated that divergence can happen at 0 to 11.5 cm or even up to 18 to 18 18.5 cm above the popliteal crease where tibial and the common peroneal nerves leave the common paraneural sheath now if we place the ultrasound probe in transverse orientation at the distal thigh the ultrasound beam actually falls perpendicular to the sciatic nerve generating a transverse cross sectional image this distal transverse approach or caps approach visualizes the sciatic nerve in short axis medial to the biceps femoris muscle this schematic diagram represent the transverse section at the distal thigh or popliteal region the left one is before the divergence as you can see here and the right one is the after the divergence we are catching the sciatic nerve here from the lateral aspect of the thigh now you need to understand the image what we are seeing on the ultrasound machine that is actually 90 degree rotated image of the real anatomy as you can see here the left one with the linear probe and the right one with the curvilinear probe so here the femur popliteal vessels and the sciatic nerve they are in the almost in the same line there will be femur then popliteal vessels then the sciatic nerve this is the relation between femur popliteal vessels and the sciatic nerve in pediatric and thin built adults i am using the linear transducer and in muscular adult and well built muscular adult and obese patients i am using the curvilinear transducer to perform this block uh, along with the ultrasound if you want to use the peripheral nerve stimulator 0.5 milliampere current is enough in dual guidance as we are using it for the identification not for the localization 100 to 150 mm 22 gauge short pivel insulated ecogenic nerve block needle is required to perform this block and the local anesthetic you can use according to your practice and the availability at your setup we are using 0.1 to 0.2% ropivacan or 0.25% bupivacan for analgesia and 0.5% or above for anesthesia along with 4 to 8 mg of dexamethasone and the volume we are using is 15 to 20 ml the patient is placed in supine position with the limbs as you can see here in neutral or the anatomical position extended at hip and knee joint sometimes slight internal rotation might be required which patient can do themselves no external assistance is required the success of the caps block depends on the appropriate position of the transducer and the proper scanning technique first you have to place the probe over the intermuscular groove between the 
vastus lateralis and the biceps femoris as you can see here at the level of superior border of the patella which is just proximal to the popliteal crease then we have to move the probe proximally until we get a view of hyperechoic sciatic nerve hypoechoic muscles and echoic vessels and the hyperechoic femur as you can see here the relation the femur vessels and the sciatic nerve beneath the biceps femoris muscle our goal is to identify the sciatic nerve at or above the level of divergence place the tip of your needle in the sub paraneural space deposit the local anesthetic inside the paraneural sheath and post block scanning you will get that local anesthetic spread over the both the components that is tbl and the common peroneal component so in out of plane technique the needle is inserted from lateral to medial direction as you can see here and the drug is deposited whereas in in plane technique the needle is inserted from the anterior lateral to the posterior medial direction and it is placed at the sweet spot where the divergence is happening and the local anesthetic is deposited if you have peripheral nerve stimulator you can use to get the inversion or the plantar flexion response at 0.5 milliamps decrease it up to 0.2 to check whether you are doing intraneural injection or not and then you deposit the drug once you are sure about it just like the other popliteal sciatic nerve block approaches caps block is indicated as an stand alone anesthesia or analgesia for below knee surgeries along with the femoral or the saphenous block saphenous nerve block it can provide complete analgesia for below knee surgeries in our hospital as you can see here the first one is in acute trauma care caps block and the femoral nerve block were performed as the on arrival block after primary and the secondary survey to make the patient pain free and we could apply the tourniquet to stop the ongoing bleeding and after application of the tourniquet surgeons could open the dressing which was done outside for evaluation second picture you are seeing a patient with a bilateral calcaneum fracture these patients sometimes are associated with spine injuries or spine fractures so in this kind of patients positional change can be harmful or spinal anesthesia are sometimes avoided in this kind of patients we perform bilateral caps block for calcaneum pinning other examples like elijar of fixator application or small bone fracture fixations these are just few examples of which we are practicing in our hospital so from our experience site of performance is within 5 to 10 cm proximal to the popliteal crease depending on the scanning area uh, the relation between the popliteal vessels may alter sometimes it may not appear within the ultrasound image we have seen that performance time significantly decreased compared to the other popliteal sciatic approaches we usually perform it in out of plane technique as the needle trajectory in awake patient is shorter which cause lesser pain the duration of analgesia is similar to the other techniques the performer's experience might play a role in the success but as per our experience after few scanning sessions our trainees can perform this block under supervision very well and safely like other psnb approaches it will not cover the saphenous territory and remember it will not provide analgesia for the thigh tourniquet so currently we are working on the uh, motor block effect on the caps block so that we can incorporate this block in our eras protocol uh, we are also doing technical comparison with the other popliteal sciatic nerve block approaches we are also looking for the feasibility of catheter placement for continuous caps block no doubt prospective clinical trials radiological and cadaverical investigations are needed to conclude caps block is simple safe time saving and convenient for both for the patient as well as the anesthesiologist it is performed in anatomical or the neutral limb position no external help is required uh, it is different from the already described ultrasound guided supine popliteal sciatic nerve block approaches here no additional assistance flexion at hip or knee joints or any positional special devices are required along with the saphenous nerve block 
it can provide complete analgesia for below knee surgeries thank you all for patient listening uh, lutful sir i just wanted to congratulate to him uh, this particular approach was uh, his his idea uh, i'm very happy that uh, uh, dr tuhin mistri thought about this this was well described in uh, the peripheral stimulator uh, guided uh, approach to the popliteal sciatic block but with the help of the ultrasound the way it is called as the caps block this terminology and the block itself is the brain child of tuhin mistri so tuhin uh, please accept our congratulations for doing this and he published it in the uh, british journal of anesthesia and this has become such a useful technique as he rightly mentioned uh, in trauma situations you needn't turn the patient's position uh, you needn't go for the lateral position and uh, you can very effectively administer the block would also be good in patients with uh, uh, not necessarily trauma in patients who come with uh, diabetic food for debridement uh, and in several situations where you do not want to alter the patient position so excellent uh, to him and uh, over to dr lutful aziz uh, to share his comments and if there are any questions <coughs> to ask thank you thank you, thank you dr tuhin and it was wonderful presentations and uh, your achievement in uh, making this block a success and i think it is uh, it will be a revolutionary change in the surgeries of below knee i i i think it will be a very good analgesic and anesthesia technique thank you very much for that and and i also congratulate you for your achievements thank you dr lutfu and on behalf of osra pm and i thank uh, all of our participants uh, dr uh, tahin from india for night nice, uh, night presentation especially for the the new approach of popliteal sciatic nerve block in supai uh, uh, position is quite nice quite nice for me and i will try it and look looking into it uh, in your article 